In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's take a deeper look at encapsulation. So encapsulation is a way of binding together pieces of code and to keep it obscure to prevent outside changes. So in our previous examples, we've had this my class class where we've had a couple of properties, value one and value two, along with a private method called add to integers and a public method called do math. You can think of encapsulation as a way of building a firewall around your class. This firewall prevents or allows different types of access to the various members of the class. The access to those members comes from the objects that you instantiate. So here in the case of when my object tries to access the property for value one, it has both the read and write ability to the property value one because we're using both the get and set accessors. However, when it comes to the property of value two, my object only has the capability of setting the value for value two. It does not have the ability to see the value of value two once it's been set. This is because the set accessor is the only accessor that is on value to property. When it comes to the add to integers method, we're eliminating the access from my object altogether. The add to integers method is marked private, which means that only other members within the my class class have the ability to look at the add to integers method and do anything with it. The add to integers method is the actual business logic that does something with the values. And in that way, it's especially important to obscure your business logic away from anyone who might be actually trying to use it. Instead, the ability to use those members are exposed through a public method such as this one called do math. This is a way of utilizing encapsulation to prevent anyone from doing anything with your members that you might not want them to be able to do. We're going to look at an example of encapsulation that does this to a very large degree, specifically so that the users have only one way to access and use your class. Ideally, encapsulation should really only allow you to have one or two ways to use your class. So here's our my class class, and I'm gonna go ahead and comment out both of the properties as well as the code that's inside of this my class constructor. Now this my class constructor, I just need to point out again, requires value one and value two to be passed into them. Now we can go down here to the do math methods and I'm gonna actually comment all of the do math methods out. So including the do math method that has a void return value, as well as the two do maths that do something to return a value. It could very well have been very confusing for a user who might have been trying to use this do math method to see that in one version, the console.readline and write line are already written into the code. Whereas when you do the do math methods otherwise, you actually have to use your own version of the console.readline and write line, and the class doesn't do it for you. This goes to something called single responsibility principle, which is part of the solid principles. I don't want to get too far into what the solid principles are, but I will highly recommend that after you get done watching this video series, you investigate the solid principles because they go hand in hand with object oriented programming to define the best business practices for designing and creating classes. So now that we've eliminated most of our code and we only have the class constructor that takes two parameters and we have the business logic, which is this private method called add to integers, you can see that we are eliminating a lot of the confusion already that might come from our class, but we still need to make this class functional to add the two values together and return a value. We're going to do that from right here within our class constructor. You may have noticed that the class constructor takes two values, value one and value two as parameters, and we can pass those two values directly along to the add to integers method. So let's go back to our class constructor and use this. We'll do add two integers and pass along value one and value two. Now we do need to return the sum of these two values back to the user. 
And the best way to do that would probably be to just go ahead and expose this as a property. So we're going to go ahead and do prop full to get the private variable as well as the public property. I'm going to go ahead and keep this an integer. I'm going to go ahead and name this underscore total. And then the public property is going to be total with a capital T. We're going to leave the get accessor because we do want the user to be able to read the value from the total property. But we're going to go ahead and delete, or we can just go ahead and comment out the set prop, the, the set accessor of the total property. Now I can go back to where we have our add to integers method. And since the add to me integers method returns back the sum of the two values being added together, we can go ahead and set the underscore total variable equal to the result from the add to integers method. You can see we have far less code being utilized here. We're using the business logic from the add to integers method to actually do the logic to add the two values. Then we have the my class constructor, which requires that the user, when they first instantiate this object, must pass along two parameters that are going to be added together. Those two parameters are going to be passed directly into the method that does the actual calculation. And that is going to be set back then to the underlying private variable, which is only exposed as much as we want it to be. So the user cannot set the total. All they can do is essentially pass along the values they want added into this class and then go and retrieve the total once the, the instantiation is complete. Let's go ahead and save this. And now let's use this in our pro program class. So we're going to declare my class my object and we're going to set it to a new instance and this new instance of my class again requires two values so we'll go ahead and do five and seven now there is no way that the user can use this my class without doing so because if i tried to take out five and seven from the initial instantiation of my class you'll see that they get a compiler error so if we put the values back in five and seven now there's really only one thing that this my class class does and that is it returns a value back in the my object object that is the total value and if i try to go and set a value for total say i wanted to change it to 23 you'll see that once again we get a compiler error if we hover our mouse over it we get the intellisense which says property or indexer cannot be assigned to it is read only. So since the user can't change the total, all they can do is get it. And from here, we can go ahead and use console.writeLine and return the value of my object dot total and then console.readLine. So you can see the usage of the my class class to do its particular function has been streamlined so that the user can't in any way mishandle the usage of the my class class. They're limited to only this one method that we are permitting them to do. It's that way that we guarantee results through encapsulation, through the firewall, to create good code that the user knows how to use and will never be confused or use it inappropriately.